You know what? What's up, Jordan? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Uh, you want me to stop the recording so you can share it? <laughs> uh, nah. Alright. So here we are at Chapter 6. Uh, Sean is not joining us, or is he at least he's not here as of now, but thankfully Vampire the Masquerade's an independent enough game that uh, we can just go on without Joseph Chung the Malkavian. Phew. Um, I already explained to the players that there's going to be a little slight retcon in reference to the fact that uh, the Metro Cab Company has been renamed the Dragon Metro Cab Company. Uh, I even made a, a little sign for them with the Ouroboros on it, so it's recognizable for them and they can notice it. If you actually want to see it, you can uh, view uh, Jordan's Twitch video archive later, if you're not doing so now. All right, uh, Chapter 6, Tuesday, January 27th. 1998. The sun shines brightly in the sky, and the day is uncharacteristically warm, while three kindred rest as best they can within their Astoria hideaway. A ghoul mercenary ensures their safety. Aaron, what does Jermaine do during the day? That's a tough question to answer. On the one hand, I'm really tempted to go check out Jersey. On the other hand, I don't know what I'd be going up against, what type of people they've got watching, uh, or if someone would try and do a retaliatory attack on these guys during the day. So I think I'm going to spend most of the day just sort of hanging out and guarding the place. All right. How does uh, Jermaine keep abreast of the news if he's interested in doing so? I don't suppose the place has a TV. We can say that perhaps uh, maybe a, a tenant moved out uh, recently, or it was in preparation for a tenant coming shortly, so uh, even the cable connection's been maintained, and what the hell, we'll, we'll say there's a television. Then fuck it, he keeps the TV on the news. Alright. Jermaine learns that after a few full day's worth of uh, casual investigation, uh, federal, state, and local officials have conclusively confirmed that a gas leak caused the explosion at O'Malley Real Estate. There's a news conference at which many important men speak, including Deputy Inspector Mikhail Vargas, as well as the mayor of New York City and the governor himself. Many media outlets express their shock and outrage at how a company's malfeasance could have caused such a thing right in the heart of the Big Apple as if Astoria Queens were the heart of the Big Apple, and it's truly a miracle that no one was wounded by the affair. An extensive interview is done with the manager of the small company, Evelyn O'Malley, during which she is quite livid, but also relieved that none of her employees were harmed. Investigators will continue to look into the matter, but now that this has been confirmed to be an accident, media attention will dwindle considerably. All right, Jermaine's going to actually take notes on key details to uh, tell Byron when he wakes up. All right. Uh, you pretty much have the uh, wealth and breadth and depth of that. It seems that uh, the whole uh, the, the news conference in which all those important people speak, it's devoted to providing details for the public so that uh, panic is minimized, especially with confirming that, yes, the, um, the explosion was caused by a gas leak, it was not, there was no, you know, malevolent intent behind it. No one caused it. It was an accident. Unfortunately, these things happen, and uh, investigators will continue to look into uh, exactly who is responsible and by how much. Now, Jermaine also learns that the New York Knickerbockers, a member of the National Basketball Association, will be playing the Miami Heat tonight at Madison Square Garden. There's almost as much media interest, if not more, in this game than there is involving the explosion. The Knicks are on a roll this season, currently second in the Eastern Conference, and riding the shoulders of superstar center Paul Erling. Their opponent, the Miami Heat, is first in the Eastern Conference. There's considerable vitriol in the city involving the Heat. When the Heat and Knicks faced off in the playoffs last year, there were numerous altercations and even a massive brawl on the court 
The Knicks lost that series handily, and they're looking for revenge. Man, fuck the Heat. Go Knicks. All right. Night ends up falling quickly, as it always does during winter, with sunset occurring a few minutes after 5 p.m. Uh, three hours later, Byron rises to the premium comforts of... Oh, wait. He's not in his normal haven. Son of a bitch. One hour later, Marcus and Joseph also awaken, with Joseph uh, leaving, pretty much immediately, uh, to go handle church business, in quotation marks. Crimson, Byron is the first of the kindred to rise. What would he like to do? Yeah, well, I'd get up and ask Jermaine what he's been doing all day. Sitting around, guarding the place. Taking notes on the news. Huh? Anything of note? He's going to kind of, you know, give him the update on the uh, situation with how the public is handling the explosion at the company. But aside from that, nothing he would be too interested in. Yeah, Byron will be annoyed at first, but then he's going to settle down and nod and say, well, it's kind of to be expected. I mean, uh, people are in full cover-their-ass mode, so... Uh, it's, and it should uh, take your company back out of the public eye. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it'll die down after a while. People's attention span for that is measured in, uh, you know, weeks, if not days. So it won't be too big a deal. Worst right. case scenario is we re rename the company. You all are familiar enough, uh, even Jermaine, with uh, how uh, supernatural news spin can be had, particularly uh, with during the, well, uh, well, Jordan's character was really the only one who was here and actively participant in the Battle of New York, but uh, the Camarilla had extensively planned for all forms of news media to be stifled, from the massive fires that were held on buildings during the day, to burn out Sabat Havens, to all the, the guns that were shot, to all sorts of various altercations. It took a lot of time to plan to stifle the media like that. However, and it's clear that uh, the activities that happened to O'Malley Real Estate kind of uh, exploded onto the uh, the news stage. But uh, it's quite obvious that, you know, since you folks have claimed domain over Astoria and they know there be vampires, uh, folks have taken an interest in spinning it to keep the masquerade in check. Right. Uh, even, and even without that, uh, Byron being uh, his, having his political history would just assume that everyone's going to be spending it to keep the populace from, you know, panicking. It wouldn't be a hard sell is what I'm trying to say. Um, and the second thing Byron will note is, uh, yeah, um, looks like uh, Madison Square Gardens might be a good place to meet our Toreador or Sheriff if we need to find him tonight. Now, uh, I'm not sure how much this was determined uh, as uh, Jordan ends up rising for the night, but uh, I did leave a message there so that I wasn't suddenly sprung on you today that uh, among the things that Jermaine ended up finding, and I guess we'll say that it was during the daytime, uh, something that Jermaine located within Dante's car, which I guess Jermaine still has here. Is that right? He would be keeping it a couple of blocks away in an alleyway or something, but yeah. Okay, yeah, something that uh, J Jermaine also found, which uh, he probably didn't find much interest in, but he figured, you know, just in case, uh, being the ghoul mercenary he is, is a Polaroid of a, uh, a close-up, uh, zoomed-in photo of uh, Leslie Cutter. Along with, the, you know, the, uh, the rap and the, uh, the, the mixtapes and the golden dice hanging from the, uh, the mirror. <laughs> And the other various little knickknacks. Yeah, uh, Byron will fill Jermaine in on who it is and say, "Yeah, that's uh, that's the the vampire that we saved uh, from the warehouse a few weeks ago, and uh, we moved her off to um, uh, uh, the Anarch territory. So I guess they're figuring out she's uh, related to us somehow." Well, uh, when you say fill in, uh, Jermaine, as uh, Marcus ends up rising for the night himself, uh, how much exactly do you wish to tell your ghoul mercenary? 
Uh, I won't mention that she might be a thin blood, but I'll I'll tell them that we definitely uh, basically what I said is that we saved her and shipped her off uh, to Anarch territory where she should be uh, uh, where she would be safer because she wanted to get out of town. So do you think that these guys had a vested interest in her, or do you think that their interest in you is what brought their attention to her? They might be trying to get at us through her. Um, she might know things about us they might want to uh, uh, try to use against us, or they may think they, that she might know. Um, her, uh, I guess I'll just come out and say, yeah, she, she, she may have been a thin blood. They might be able to use that against us. Like politically? I doubt that a Sabbat pack is going to try to act politically against you. Well, it could discredit us. I mean, if it comes out that we aided and abetted a thin blood, that would debase, uh, if we try to get the rest of the Camarilla to uh, help us, that might, uh, uh, it might make it more difficult. So, I don't know. That's what, Byron looks at everything through a political lens, so he might be off base here, but that's what he thinks. Speaking of politics and trying to get people on your side, do you think that now is a good time to go talk to the sheriff? And Byron doesn't think any time is really a good time to talk to the sheriff uh, for himself, but he says uh, it can go either way. Um, if we go, uh, we might be able to get some information from him. We don't have to ask him to physically get involved. I think that would be a huge mistake. But we might be able to get information. But if we have leads to go on, probably we should try following them uh, first, uh, see if we can take care of ourselves, if at all possible. You're well, dealing with a potential Sabbat incursion in Queens. Don't you think you could get help on this? Yeah. I mean, either way works. I mean, it's it's kind of like it's it's it's. It, it, there are pluses and minuses. If we handle it ourselves, then that's fine. We haven't got anyone else involved, and so uh, we won't lose any face in Camarilla by having to, like, cry to mommy or whatever, because um, it is our domain, and we should be able to handle it ourselves. However, if there is a threat to the whole city from New Jersey, then the sheriff should be apprised, if nothing else. I am of the opinion that we should tell the sheriff tonight. Yeah, uh, Byron has no no objection. I don't know if we should actually ask him for help, but we should at least fill him in. If he offers help in some fashion, we wouldn't refuse it, but we don't need to go begging yet for help. We're not begging for help. We're just relaying information. Exactly. So I think we should mount up and get our asses to Manhattan. Do you want to do that first, or do you want to go check out that uh, Dragon Metro garage first, or I don't know even what would be there, but uh, I guess, when, when is the game? It probably didn't, well, I don't know how long those basketball games go in the city. Well, uh, it's currently uh, a little after uh, 9 p.m. right now. The game is most likely happening right now. Right, so we should probably head over there now if we want to catch people. Uh, I would, I would think that they would, uh, uh, that uh, even vampires would be interested in the NBA. Heck if I know. Sean is in the chat. User was moved to your channel. Hello. 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 Did anyone feel like uh, giving uh, Sean a uh, little recap of uh, what's been discussed thus far? Well, at, at the moment we're discussing whether we should go to the sheriff right now to tell him about the Sabat incursion or if we should go check out the, uh, the newly named Dragon Metro Cab Company. 
Not newly named in the story. I did a slight retcon of it. Figured it was a more memorable title. Yeah, and I'll also of note, uh, Jermaine watched the news all day, and he saw reports that uh, uh, the bombing of our office has been spun to be a gas leak. So there's a little bit of uh, furor at uh, us for allowing that to happen, but it seems like it'll blow over without much repercussions. Okay, so nothing actually did happen. Nope, we were we've just been sitting here uh, talking about it for the last uh, fifteen minutes or so. Okay. I'd uh, yeah, for the sake of uh, having the game move along, I said that uh, you'd immediately left as soon as you woke to do church business. But suddenly, Joseph realizes, ah, fuck that! <laughs> he comes wheeling back in. So yeah, that's pretty much where we are right now. Yeah, what would Joseph's reaction to uh, finding uh, Leslie Cutter's picture be? Because uh, Jermaine just showed us that picture that he found in the car as well. I'm pissed at uh, uh, actually Boss Callahan um, for because Joseph's uh, uh, Joseph's concerned with taking care of things. He, he's concerned with having everything in order and having everything uh, the way he wants it to be. Um, and Boss Callahan fucked that up. How so? Because uh, Boss Callahan the Anarchs is the reason he hasn't been able to get in contact with Cutter. And uh, every time I've tried, uh, Grimmett said it, it's been, uh, I've never actually managed to get in contact with her. I've gotten, at best, just word of her. And uh, he blames that on Boss Callahan. Always good to uh, to uh, hate the, uh, the Anarch leader, right? <laughs> Considering that for a little while, that's who he wanted to, you know, put up there uh, um, as a baron of all of New York. Yeah, that that's great. Um, but yeah, going going to the I think going to the um the sheriff is is probably the the best bet. Going straight there, I I think that's. Yeah, I think that's what uh, Joseph would be saying, is that going straight to the sheriff is, is what's necessary. Because, I mean, at this point, it's less about us defending our own domain and more about a Sabbat incursion in New York. Right, and that's something the whole Camarilla has to be involved with. That's something that's the whole Camarilla's duty. Yeah, I'll say, sure, if you say so. Let's all pile into a car and get going. Um, so Q here has drive besides me and Jermaine. I, I think it's I just don't. you and Jermaine. Oh, <laughs> you, you guys know. as well. No, no I, don't, I don't have any. I, I'm pretty sure it is just you two. Jermaine, you want to drive? I can drive. So yeah, go ahead and uh, detail uh, what vehicles you end up taking and what you guys end up bringing with you as you uh, you're gonna cross over Queensboro Bridge and uh, head for Elysium. Well, I've got my standard stuff in the trunk, and I'm planning on taking my car. Whatever I left in his trunk. Because I'm going in his car. Okay. I didn't know if you all were taking one vehicle or two. Well, we have our choice of uh, one total vehicle or the other total vehicle that Joseph owns. I don't know. Do we have? We only have that one blue car, right? I mean, do you have, you have Jermaine's car, but uh, Joseph's uh, uh, sedan as well as the dark blue, uh, navy blue sedan have... Uh, well, you still have it. It's just uh, uh, it might be dangerous to drive around Dante's uh, vehicle. 
Yep. Yeah, we want. Mo I want to store that somewhere. I stashed it in an alleyway a few blocks away from where we were staying. Okay. Also, uh, yeah, Sean, the server's up. Uh, whenever you feel like uh, uh, hopping along, there's a uh, a few things that have uh, changed on the map, but uh, everything will be fine. Yeah, uh, as for what Byron's taking with him, uh, the usual, you know, the flashlight, the pistol, the uh, knife, uh, PDA, cell phone, um, all his, like, Kevlar vest and stuff is still at his apartment and he hadn't got back there yet, so. And apparently he's not allowed to touch a shotgun again. I don't know. Jermaine keeps glaring at him. I don't know what's going on there. It's a good thing I didn't make you roll to, for humanity loss, huh? <laughs> Dick move, yeah, Byron. I was just killing a vampire that had blown up my building. I don't know how regretful I would feel about that, but yeah. <laughs> also, Nothing uh, but regrets. Uh, don't forget to uh, lose a point from your blood pool, ye old vampires. I believe that puts uh, the two 13th generation kids down to six each. I'm at I'm at six, yeah. Jermaine, because he's a black man, actually doesn't lose any points. <laughs> yep, because he's oh, a black man. I do man. need to roll willpower. You sure do. I was about to uh, bring that up, actually. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> oh, please just, do. Just watch. Nine ones. Well, if there's a one. What was the difficulty again? Uh, we uh we assumed six, so uh, you succeeded with that. If a white wolf had provided a higher difficulty, we'd go with that. But nope. And White Wolf said, if no difficulty is provided, assume six. There you go, then. It also says a storyteller can pretty much make up whatever the fuck he wants. So, you know, you got that going. That's true. All right. Um... You actually should be able to control Jermaine's car yourself. Actually, uh, well, Aaron can do that, but any of the characters should be able to drag the token now, because it's a token and no longer an object. And it's not gridlocked. It is not, no. It's so tiny. Alright, what's the seating arrangement in the car? It might be important. <laughs> Shotgun. Yeah, Byron's in the back. I'm going to drive from the back. Driver. <laughs> You're going to drive from the back. <laughs> I suppose you're sitting up front in the driver's seat then, Sean. Because <laughs> Jermaine's driving in the back. Apparently. He's like sitting behind you. He reaches his arms around you. It's okay, Joseph. Hold still. Well, this is strange. We've got one in the trunk. All right. So, uh, the trip through, uh, Queens and into, uh, Manhattan is, uh, pretty eventful in regards for, uh, how heavily packed the traffic has ended up being, uh, this particular time of, uh, Tuesday evening. But, uh, you, you manage to slog through, uh, Jermaine's got patience at the wheel, and he's a competent enough driver, and... And it's not a fucking race to get there. Right. Nah. There's no one, you know, waiting to explode the vehicle, so that's good news. Good news, everyone. And uh, eventually you all uh, make it to Madison Square Garden. Now the park problem's going to be finding a place to park. Because, as it turns out, uh, there's a lot of vehicles, both... All around Madison Square Garden, of course, uh, parking garages, which uh, 
of course, you can uh, end up checking the vehicle into, but uh, a lot of traffic. I could just circle the block until you guys need to get picked up. You could. Mm, I think you might have to do that unless you can find a parking spot in the next five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll look for a parking spot, but the backup plan is to just drive around the block until they need to get picked up. Sure, you can find a parking spot. It's uh it's gonna be a stiff fee, but um for for this this type of parking uh, that you end up getting. You know how folks tend to be for like, you know, major games, especially if they have parking spots available. Sure, sure, come in. You know, they just charge you money and the closer you are to the event, the more money it costs, right? <laughs> Son of a bitch. But, <laughs> You are, especially at your main. That's going to be one of the expenses coming out of this month. Exactly. <laughs> sure, it's, uh, hundred bucks for a parking space, no problem. I mean, it is in Manhattan, and you know, this is a very, uh, a very important uh, regular season game between the Knickerbockers and the Heat. But uh, you definitely do. Fucking I'll just hate that. Add it to the bill. You definitely do manage to. Uh, <laughs> it, it was intentional, but uh, it's great for anyone who actually does follow American uh, basketball. How things have turned out, you know, uh, in, in the late 2000s now, or at least uh, now they hate the heat. And here in 1998, New York City, they hate the heat. It works. But yeah, Analogies. you do manage. You no, know, the commonalities. It's like I'm t interweaving with real life history. You do end up finding a, a parking spot, though. Very, very well lit. You know, like the ninth floor of a parking garage. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's inconvenient. <laughs> I mean, I think Laura. being able to find parking in the middle of Manhattan is just pretty convenient, no matter where you find it. All right, I think we all get out of the car then, and then we make our way to Elysium. Uh, Byron's going to say, hey, do you guys want to uh, blush up before you leave? I mean, Byron's going to do that. He's going to use a blood point for that. But you guys, I think, take two, so I don't know if they, you want to do They definitely do take two. As no, apparently Byron goes inside of Joseph. No, yeah. no he's, he's inside of me, I think. <laughs> Please refrain from entering him. I got him, yeah. Bad touch! Bad touch! Why, is, why do you keep doing that, Byron? Oh, I just got a, I, I think I have like a, yeah, I do have a cat here in my laser uh, for my mouse, so it's jumping all around, that's all. So I tried to double click and I ended up moving. I'm going to blush up though. Yeah, I'm not going to, I don't have the blood to, to waste. But it's worth noting, there's a, like tens of thousands of people milling about in Mad around here, as well as actually going to be inside of Madison Square Garden. Yeah, but it's, it's, um... You're going uh, to see the sheriff of the New York City metropolitan area. Yeah, but blush it up would put me in hungry. I'm hungry, so what? Makes this game fun. If you two want to go out, I'm sure there'll be a lot of drunk people at this game. You can find someone in an alley. Um, and, I mean, if you want to go off and feed, you know, find someone... I don't know. We might be able to catch him, and Byron can go in and try to catch him while you do that, and maybe you can catch up. It's up to you. I like you the idea to... where Byron goes to face the sheriff alone. Isn't yeah, it hilarious? That... I, I thought it was amusing. I I'm going to risk being hungry. That sounds like a better plan. I... Mm. It's also worth noting that the smell of blood and your and your possible you know thoughts about it's going to be a pretty intense, given the fact that uh you're going to be surrounded and packed within tens of thousands of people. In addition to them being able to see you in whatever condition you're in. Yeah, can we just you know go real quick to to grab it? Can someone just grab me a sweatshirt with a hoodie? <laughs> Go get it yourself, bruh.
I'm sure we can buy one in the garden. They probably have tons for the Knicks and the Heat. You can just buy we can, one we can, we, oh, we, If we're, if we're going to do this, we have to buy my Miami Heat hoodie. We have to. You, uh, you need a sweater? You're getting a little bit cold out? I'm afraid people are going to look at you. Huh? Yeah. I'll, I'll just buy a sweater. I'll, once I get in, I'll just... Wander around until I can get a sweater, get, uh, and uh, if we're out so where someone can see me, I'll just pull the hood up. Yeah, you can definitely buy a hoodie. Official NBA merchandise is definitely sold at these events. And knockoffs. How many dots of resources does he lose by buying this stuff, though? Well, um, for this, it just say it, uh, it puts a significant di di uh, Dent and uh, his uh, on-hand cash. All right. Let's see. Um, Eighty dollars. Yeah, that sounds about right for you know it. Fucking switch. <laughs> Damn, you should have bought the knockoff. <laughs> yeah, but it would have been like the Knicks and just like left off the starting K. <laughs> N-I-C-K-S. <laughs> no, it's just N-I-X. We see, now that's just cool in its own right. Uh, all right, so uh, Marcus has, uh, has used his two blood points. Byron's used one, and... Uh, Joseph, uh, looks pretty goddamn weird. He heads into, uh, Madison Square Garden. He's, uh, he's catching some attention and some eyes, but, uh, he, he, there's a lot of other activity going about. The, uh, the game is currently, uh, approaching the end of the first quarter. Started a bit late, but, um, you, you have the hoodie in your possession. I think we need to invest in like a do makeup skill or something. Is that available? We can just put some foundation, some blush on, and <laughs> sorry. If you guys want to diversify into like a cosmetic skill, I wouldn't have a problem with you spending your experience points on that. Nah. Yeah, but more of a joke. But hey, man, I mean, shoot, if Joseph wants to, that's cool. I mean, I'm pretty flexible, you know, as a storyteller. If you guys, if that's something your characters are interested in doing, I don't have a problem with that. The old Mally Real Estate Office and Beauty Salon. Get your nails done while you do our paperwork. That sounds like it might be hard. All um, you need now is a few homosexuals as employees, and you'll be good to go. Nah, Korean ladies. There you go. Well, that would better. work too. <laughs> Just mix them both together. <laughs> All right. So, so we're in the garden. Um, well, um, I've never been in the garden. I'm assuming it's similar to other places, so we can kind of walk around and check the um, uh, the. If we can even get down there, we might be able to look past the guards to see who's in the little uh, the boxes down at the bottom. Are you four uh, still together uh, inside the Madison Square, like standing near the booth where uh, where uh, Joseph bought his hoodie, his eighty dollar hoodie? Yeah, I'm planning on sticking with these guys. Yeah. There is a uh, gentleman who is uh, very clearly interested in the uh, in you all. Uh, swimming through you, uh, swimming through the crowd, actually, with uh, what seems to be skilled ease. A, uh, a dark-skinned gentleman with uh, numerous piercings covering the, uh, the curvature of his ear, um, although uh, no other piercings elsewhere. Um, a very sharply dressed man, uh, well manicured, uh, a clean-shaven as well as bald. Uh, not exactly the scariest type in terms of, like, physical size, but, uh, he's got this, uh, clear sort of, like, I guess you would call, like, a, an aura around him, a feel to him, that just, uh, has the crowd almost as if it, like, parts a few inches around him. Uh, the suit that he is wearing is, uh, is well-tailored and, uh, is dark in color. Perhaps as if you were some sort of security person.
Okay, Do you I guys have a know question. that guy? Yeah, I was I was going to ask, how did we actually? Are we in the stadium now? I didn't even think of that because we don't have tickets, do we? <laughs> no, you don't have tickets. Uh, you're not actually. Uh, you sort of like cross like uh, the initial threshold where a security check's been done, but you haven't yet uh, shown your tickets to uh, actually gain any seating. You'd have to uh, buy uh, tickets that don't actually exist. But Madison Square Garden is more than just the actual arena. There's a lot of other events that take place as well. And so uh, you guys have just got past the initial security check, and uh, if you want to actually uh, really gain any serious interest, uh, you'd have to use tickets. I got you. All right, well, I guess uh, Byron will just turn towards the approaching man and wait. I mean, because I don't know him. It's fine with me. Yeah, there's not much to be done. Yep. The man uh, ends up approaching the four of you. It, uh, again, it almost seems as if uh, the crowd uh, sort of uh, you know, just uh, steps away a few inches. So busy with uh, doing their own things and finding the path of least resistance that uh, dealing with all sorts of crazy kooky weirdos in New York City, they don't, they don't, they don't really care about focusing on you all. And even it seems like, you know, Joseph's queer pallid look is uh, forgotten, although the uh, the gentleman does give it a rather sort of disapproving glance under uh, the, the cowl of the hoodie. He uh, looks at the four of you and says, The sheriff is waiting. If you would please follow. Our nods and follows. Yes, in here. Yeah, pretty much. Just is going to hang around back at the group. Now, it should be said that uh, for those of you uh, uh, who've lived in New York City for a while and are familiar with it, uh, your characters would know that after uh, the prince, uh, Calibros, uh, took over after the ousting the Sabbat, Elysium was originally just a box at Madison Square Garden, um, where uh, the court was held. You know, it was a rather, you know, lush and, you know, luxurious box here. Um, but still just a box nonetheless. It was only with uh, various events and uh, difficulties between uh, Camarilla, particularly a, vi a fight between a Bruja and Gangrel, that uh, Calibro said expanded um, uh, Elysium to cover all of Madison Square Garden. Except other kindred were misinterpreting this as, uh, you know, including Madison Square as well, which wasn't Calibros' intentions, but he was like, ah, fuck it, what the hell. Uh, the gentleman is apparently uh, recognized here and known, and it does not seem as if he has any difficulties with security or otherwise, as he leads you all uh, from uh, the main atrium through a various series of uh, passageways, which end up becoming increasingly, increasingly empty of, uh, of people, particularly the juice bags. Uh, there is an elevator, a private elevator, the five of you end up going up a uh, considerable distance, uh, though not overly much. And uh, when you emerge, you uh, you find yourselves in actually a very uh, quiet and peaceful area, except for the uh, you know the crowd roaring in the uh, the main uh, actually the you know, the arena, the stands, as well as you know the basketball game out there being played. Currently a very close game, but then again, it's just at the end of the first quarter. There's still much more left to be played. There is a um, at the end of the corridor, there is a uh, a white metal door with uh, yeah, a rather burly gentleman uh, standing beside it. He uh, looks at the five of you. He gives a nod. And uh, your escort ends up opening the door. So you all can see inside. Uh -oh. Or you all promptly die. Super, I have a whole new character concept. Uh, I'll start that up now. Good campaign, everyone. Yeah. Are you going with Giovanni or, uh, you know, what? What are you going with? City Gangrel all the way. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, the same. Just an entire coterie of City Gangrel. 
So as you enter the box, which I've revealed to the left of the Manhattan map, it is uh, very luxurious, as well as uh, not very, very staffed, uh, you know of. I'm sure none of your characters are actually familiar with how uh, these boxes can actually be staffed and how many people can end up swarming around these things, from business, you know, magnates, to anyone who's simply interested in the game, of course, you know, at the behest of the ownership. But this one is obviously and clearly privately, uh, you know, protected here by the vampires, and it wouldn't be hard to do considering the supernatural powers that vampires have at their disposal. There is one gentleman who ends up managing a plethora of food all, and drinks, although none of it would be uh, what you as vampires would be interested in. And uh, closer by the door, and they turn to look at you, but they don't much care, are uh, uh, three rather lovely women. Now, uh, further on down the line, uh, in discourse with each other, which stops as the door opens, are two dark-skinned gentlemen. There is, of course, Kadir al-Asmai, the sheriff of New York City, who rotates his head to look at you with that rather penetrating uh, uh, glower and that cruel mouth, which uh, is currently set in a thin line. And then there's someone with whom uh, there is uh, no doubt or question. Uh, and in contrast to Kadir's uh, beautiful suit with his... Uh, immaculately made Swiss watch around his wrist is a gentleman wearing a uh, a New York Yankees cap although he actually has his traditional sunglasses off for this one and as well as no shotgun nearby who also turns to rotate and look at you uh, Marcus oh, will remember him from say that no brief right either he's like Dang. he's like finally dressed up for this one <laughs> uh, Marcus definitely knows him this is Archon Theo Bell he looks, well, he's not, you know, scouring at you. <laughs> well, Byron's going to do the uh, Patrick Stewart uh, uh, shirt tuck thing, you know, with his jacket and take a step in. Also worth noting that uh, it seems the sheriff's eyes linger a bit longer on Byron. Super. I didn't know Theo Bell was going to be here, guys. Well, no uh, we'll get this over with. You all end up filtering in uh, both of the gentlemen, uh, uh, the sheriff as well as Theo Bell, end up rising. And uh, sher the sheriff uh, ends up uh, looking at the four humans who are in the booth. And... Uh, that uh, the quiet menace he has uh, floating about him kind of focuses itself as he very easily attracts the attention with them and says one word, OUT! Very quickly, the, <laughs> the three women, as well as the server, stream past you. And the door closes yeah, behind you. Kadir uh, then moves a bit forward, casually picks up a table, and begins putting chairs around it. Well, I guess, you know, Byron will go see if they can get some more chairs and help out, or if he does, he's not allowed, he'll wait for him to finish and then take a seat along one of the sides, not at the head. Do you want to approach <laughs> Kadir as fine, help him move chairs? It, it seems like he's rather intent on doing this song, because as soon as he finishes, he glowers at all of you and says, sit. Okay. Byron does so. We all die. Doesn't look like Byron's sitting. He's lagging behind. <laughs> Wait, I'm, maybe I need to get a new map. I haven't even gone there. No, um, I'll focus your view.
Look off to oh, the left of the Manhattan. There you go. Yeah. There's a Don't... chair there. Yep. Oh, was there? Oh. Yep. Oh. Okay. Um, Kadir ends up taking a seat himself, uh, sort of folding his uh, his arms as uh, he looks towards each of you. Uh, Jermaine receives the least attention. It is Byron who is, uh, again, the, uh, the, uh, the baleful uh, glare just uh, lingers on a bit too long. Uh, Theobel uh, sort of stands off to the side, uh, props himself up against the table here, uh, pushes some of the food and uh, the bottles out of the way, and uh, just uh, looks on with a neutral look. The sheriff, with uh, again, using his uh, very extensive vocabulary, says one word. Explain. Uh, Byron will look around, and if no one else looks like they want to talk, he'll start. I don't know why, but he just wants to get it over with and get out as quickly as possible. Who wants to begin? <laughs> All right, well, I guess Byron will go. He'll say, well, as you probably know, uh, our uh, office in Astoria was bombed. We think it might be the start of a new uh, Sabat incursion from New Jersey. The uh, sheriff takes this about as well as uh, you could imagine a gentleman of this temperament uh, uh, being the designated sheriff and and perhaps the highest ranking member here who looks after the city would take that. As in his facial expression doesn't change at all, though the brows end up furrowing. He, um, his gaze turns to Byron. From the beginning. He actually said more than one word that time. Oh god, we're gonna die. Yeah, I'm actually trying to figure out where the beginning actually is, because uh, Byron doesn't really know when it started. It would have started uh, if, when they... If you're hesitating, I think Joseph would he cut in. Yeah, I mean, because he doesn't want to talk about the warehouse. He really doesn't want to bring that up, but he doesn't know that that's when the Sabat got interested necessarily, except that Leslie Cutter is involved. Uh, whatever. You go ahead. All right, Joseph begins. Uh, he'll start with the warehouse. He'll give a short version of... What do uh, what does your character say? Okay. Um, the, the... Sorry, give me a sec. The, uh, uh, the, that day that we were, uh, well, that night that we were told to uh, investigate the warehouse is when I'm pretty sure this began. Uh... During that time, we found a... Uh, Told to investigate the warehouse. Uh, we're we're going to all look at the uh, look at uh, Theo. <laughs> well, Marcus is, anyway. <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone except the sheriff. Yeah. Well, uh, Byron will just nod towards uh, the Archon there. Sheriff follows your eyes, rotates back to look at Theo Bell. Theobel says, I had visited Marcus prior to leaving the city, and I informed him of a potential Sabbat incursion that had encroached upon their domain of Astoria. Uh, give, just giving a neutral glance towards the sheriff while he says that, the sheriff nods along with that, uh, having clearly expected this, he just wanted to see how you all respond <laughs> as he turns back to Joseph. Um, during that uh, uh, dealings, we saw signs of the Oberus. Um, we saw uh, things in the fog. Um, we had not yet placed together that it was Sabat. We were uncertain of its origin. Uh, we we uh, met with uh, someone who was 
essentially uh, left for dead. And by now, what we are certain are uh, Sabat. Um, we uh, had her leave. Um, she, uh, I'm think that it may be the she that the Sabat's after. Uncertain. Um, You've uh, attracted uh, the sheriff's uh, undivided attention. He sort of leans his head closer. Says nothing. He's oh, gonna what? eat you. <laughs> I forget what happened after that. What was uh, that? What you say that a lot. I forget what happened. After that. <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I'm having a little trouble recalling what happened in the next session. It's fine. As uh, Joseph sort of splutters out, does anyone want to take up for him? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but I'm going to say, so uh, after that was sorted out, uh, he'll he glance meaningfully at Joseph. Um, uh, she, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was the next thing that we did? I think that was the first time we went we into town. We dealt with the Fratellis after that. But that's entirely out of character because Jermaine wasn't around for that. Indeed. Right. Chapter 2 was devoted. Evelyn was found beaten up at the her second floor of the O'Malley real estate. And you all ended up visiting the middleman. In some form right. or fashion. Except for Joseph, yeah. who was batshit crazy in his haven. Right. Uh, uh, to, so, but I'll say things died down. We had some personal uh, domain business we had to handle with Valentine and Lorenzo. Uh, you may, if you wish me to go further into on that, I can tell you, but I don't think it pertains at all to Lorenzo. The yes. That's a first name. Who, Lorenzo? Fratelli. There's a few blank seconds. As the sheriff is obviously attempting to recall this, like, um... The glower never ends up leaving, Byron. <laughs> it seems yeah. to be harder, uh, more piercing on the venture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just say that out loud, yeah, yeah, stop staring at me, do I have something in my cheek or what? <laughs> Byron is not going to say that, but he is going to, but he is going to say, yeah, the owner of the middleman. Sheriff nods. Theobel uh, remains uh, neutral in his uh, facial expressions. Uh, shortly after this time, we noticed we were being followed by uh, shadowy figures, uh, like uh, with the uh, from the shadow skill, whatever it's named, yeah, Byron would know, um, uh, the discipline, and uh, driving all through driving blue sedans. Uh, we didn't know who they were or where they were, and we spent most of our time try, trying to figure that out until those uh, very same folks uh, uh, first came in and, and uh, destroyed our office, and we repaired it, then they came back and blew it up. Uh, we later, uh, after running away from that, just yesterday, we tracked one down, uh, looking like he was trying to break into uh, Joseph's uh, uh, church. Uh, that vampire did not survive the engagement. However, we did find ID and papers indicating that uh, he is from New Jersey and the cars are from a uh, uh, car lot in New Jersey. So yeah, I'm, ch I'm looking at the chat. Yeah, we forgot something. Does anyone else want to fill anything in? Well, I mean, we've got to mention that they shot up our place of residence, tried to bomb us, uh, were following us around the cars, and we now have the phone and the license of the one guy. You, would you know, Jermaine like to say this out loud? Because that would be the best way to convey the information. Right, yeah, I mean... He'll, he'll, I'm... he'll actually say... Uh, we brought one of them to their final death and uh, tossed out the uh, phone and the driver's license. 
the uh, phone and driver's license land on the table, then. Sheriff looks down at the table, looks back up towards Jermaine, tilts his head, and uh, swivels to uh, look at Marcus. Anything else to add, Marcus? It seems that uh, that a sheriff's tone actually softens just a little when addressing Marcus. Well, we did look into something else. We were looking at in a, uh, oh, a building up in the Bronx, you know, Polonia's, one of Polonia's old stomping grounds. It's kind of spooky up there, and, uh, well, last time we went there, we learned something about, I don't know if it's related, but have you seen the Dragon Metro Cab Company or any of their logos around here? The uh, sheriff sort of furs his brows and says, Yes, sure. Well, when we were adve when we were investigating this Archbishop's Polonia's safe house or whatever again, there happens to be this giant billboard nearby with Dragon Metro Cab Company logo on there. And both me and Jermaine here could, sw could swear quite se severely that the thing, the logo was moving. And, well, you know, Clan Samitsi, their, their uh, symbol is an, Ouro is an Ouroboros. And don't forget what happened when we left there, Byron will say. Do you know anything about uh, weapons made from beams of light that not, can knock bands uh, uh, completely over? This would actually be the first time that the sheriff... Uh... He's been uh, keeping a good face on. He uh, looks confused at Byron. And uh, Theo Bell, actually uh, leaning against the table, lifts a brow as well. It was like a big, red, glowing beam of heat. And there was a not giant really, roar. Not really heat. I, I don't think anyone's got burned by it, but it was something like light or, or something. They left big scorch marks on the vent side of the van. It was also red. Mm. Oh. Well, none of us got burned by it, at least. Uh, so, it wasn't, like, anything too dangerous in that respect. Well, could None of us got be, hit but... by it. Yeah, Jermaine yeah, is the one got... that knows the most about what it looked like, because we were all inside that van, and Byron saw nothing. Yeah. It shot out of the building. We didn't see what shot it. The confusion on the sheriff's face uh, remains. Uh, he's toward, he takes on a ponderous look, uh, tilting his head. Uh, the eyes roll up a little as he starts thinking on his own. Discovering nothing, he uh, actually uh, ends up turning his head to look at Theo Bell. And as for Theo Bell, he ends up uh, standing from his leaning perch and uh, moving towards the table. Leans over, looks at the license, uh, the, the driver's license. Dante Avant. He says it neutrally. There is uh, no form of recognition associated with it. He looks down at it. Yeah, he peers at it curiously. Uh, looks back at the four of you. Looks towards the sheriff. Sheriff looks back at the Archon. Archon looks back at the four of you. There are numbers of his allies in the foam. The interesting thing, he begins, it is why a pack of Sabbat would be interested specifically in the... He looks you over, uh, in the... 
looks towards Marcus. There was a Nosferatu among you. What happened with him? That's a funny story. Um, let's just say that one night he got really angry and we had to put him into torpor. Fair enough. He will arise in some amount of time. Right. None of you know specifically, so that's a fair answer. And yeah, certainly as a vampire, he's familiar with the idea of Torfor. Uh, I see, and of course, he uh, gestures a, a strong hand over towards Jermaine. That would be why you hired him. Mr. Wallace. Jermaine will not. The, uh, thing, though, is why Paka Sabat would end up being interested in your group, specifically. Maybe they think that we found something at that warehouse, though I don't know what it is. We saw a lot of scorch marks. Maybe they were trying to hide that laser of doom thing. The doom laser. Yeah, I mean, Byron has no idea what it is. The sheriff looks a little derisively at Byron. Uh, Theo Bell ends up keeping his uh, neutral glance. And this woman you found within the Steinway Warehouse District, what's become of her? Uh, Byron will, uh, will sigh and say, I think that's a question best directed at our... Uh, Fair father here, and he'll glance at uh, Joseph. She's currently with the Anarchs. With the Anarchs. She's a vampire, then. A kindred. Yes. What gave you the idea that handing her to the Anarchs was a good idea? We were, at the time, had no reason to believe that this was anything more than just a failed raid. Um, we assumed that she was just another kindred that needed somewhere to go, and I thought it was fair that it not be our domain. Why the Anarchs? I love how you're just feeding into these weighted questions. Yeah, it, it, I'll note that Byron, he's just looking at his hands in his lap at this point. He is just sitting out entirely. <laughs> we asked her... You, uh, you admitted that you did hand her over to the Anarchs when, until then, it was just something that the sheriff implied. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I understand. Um, saying this, uh, it wasn't our choice per se we asked where she wanted to go and she said the anarchs that is going to require you attempting to bluff uh the archon as well as the sheriff um gonna go with a we're gonna go with a uh, manipulation plus subterfuge at difficulty six and needing to get more successes than uh either the sheriff or the archon do Uh, Sanctity help at all here? Not with these two, no. That would just uh, lesser, lessen your punishment. <laughs> uh, By if Byron notices you <laughs> winding up to try to bluff, he's gonna he's gonna try to catch your eyes. You can still try it, but uh, oh no, he's already said it. He's committed to this. All right, that's four successes from you. All right. 
the sheriff and Archon uh, stare at you and, uh, as you end up uh, speaking these words. Uh, you, you think you did a pretty goddamn good job of uh, selling this one. They both turn their heads to look at each other. There is a uh, sort of glint that appears in Theo Bell's eyes. And for the first time, you see a um, rather, uh, you see a, a, not a scowl appear on the uh, sheriff's face. Rather, it is a wolfish grin. And they both look back at Joseph. They're going to eat you. Byron's going to say, yeah, Joseph. I don't think they bought it. Um, yeah. Uh, and Byron, Byron's just going to shake his head and sigh and just, you know. No, she was a thin blood. She didn't want to die. We moved her out of the city so she wouldn't. I just love that you start admitting it before they actually call you on it. Well, see, Byron, well, see, the thing is, uh, Byron didn't want to lie to him anyway because he's on thin ice to begin with. And Byron, he has an out. Joseph doesn't in the fact that he wasn't around when Joseph let her go. Um, so oh, he was dude, gonna... no, no, it's, it's, it's all good. I, I get it. Uh, Jermaine's safe either way right now. He's an independent contractor. I'm just right. Wow. At, a, at Byron's sudden uh, blurting out of this information... He's definitely attracted the attention of both Kadira Asmai and Theo Bell, particularly with the words thin blood. The uh, wolfish grin ends up turning into a sneer of sorts, as if uh, he has greater reason to look derisively at Byron. Whereas uh, Theo ends up keeping his neutral expression. And it ends up being Theo who uh, leans forward to the table to... Uh, to uh, he still uh, ends up looming a little bit over uh, Byron as Byron is sitting. And uh, Theo Bell is taller even than Marcus, and uh, says, A thin blood, you say? She what proof believe... do you have of that? She Absolutely seems to believe none. that she was one. That was the only indication that she may have, but there was there was no reason to, to believe what she said. There was no reason to believe that she anything she knew was... Uh, right or anything. The only place she learned that from was uh, people who were dead. She had no ideas of the 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 rules of the Camarilla. She didn't know what the terms meant. She she thought she was a thin blood and it was an offhand comment. There was no reason to believe that she knew she had any idea she knew ah, there was no reason to believe she had any idea what she was talking about. Um, and Byron will say, maybe they want to see the picture. I mean, he doesn't have it. Jermaine probably still has it. No, I gave it to you guys. All right. Pic well, I'll, picture. Uh, the sheriff asks. Yes, found along with that uh, cell phone and ID in that man's car was a picture of said potential thin blood and he'll if he has it he'll toss it on the table along with the rest both the uh the sheriff and the archon end up taking a close look at the photo uh sheriff uh being the closer one to you ends up grabbing the polaroid first uh, tilts his head as he studies it uh the sneer uh temporarily disappearing to uh Give a studious look. He then hands it to the, uh, the standing Theo Bell, who in turn with that uh, neutral expression, although an eyebrow does lift, as he, uh, he looks at the photo as well. While uh, Theo Bell is looking at the photo, the sheriff actually turns to uh, stare up at Theo and says, Why would the Sabad be interested in the thin blood, Theo? The Archon slowly shakes his head, a frown uh, coming on his face. He sets the photo back down on the table. I don't know.
Theo ends up uh, looking towards uh, Joseph again and uh, uh, tilts his head. So you gave this, or rather recommended that this woman be sent to the Anarchs because she didn't know any better about the sex, is that right? And yet you had no cause to believe in anything she said at all. We, considering the state of the thing, I personally was convinced that she wasn't Sabat, that it was the Sabat that attacked her. But as to her knowledge of what was true and what was not, uh, there was no reason to believe she knew what she was talking about. But considering that she was attacked by someone and that someone wasn't there, and there was no one else who had rightful uh, area to our domain, I, we, need, we couldn't leave her running around our domain freely. Uh, needed somewhere. It's hard for me to not help someone in need. And I thought it was the most beneficial for her. The sheriff snorts. That is not exactly the best way of dealing with a thin blood, Joseph. Perhaps it is difficult for me to hurt someone, to cause someone to have to suffer simply because of who they are. Uh, you go on. Now that. Okay. Uh, Kadir is uh, giving you a very uh, disdainful look at that. Uh, Theo uh, reverts back to his neutral expression, uh, uh, looks over at Marcus. The Ouroboros at the Steinway Warehouse District. That appeared in the fog. That was at the Muncie Pond, whatever, the Muncie... Thing. The Muncie Hudson Expediting and Storage. Yeah, that's where it was. And, uh... Well, no, it, it appeared at the Steinway Warehouse District, too. That's what the group has said. In the fog, in Chapter 1. All right, yeah. And it apparently also was at the Muncie Hudson Expediting and Storage Complex where it's moved quite visibly a couple of meters across the billboard. Theo frowns down at uh, Marcus. Uh, clear that, you know, uh, Theo uh, doesn't have uh, necessarily a problem with believing Marcus, just that uh, it sounds strange. <laughs> Theo ends up looking uh, back at the sheriff. And says, There might be more, Kadir, who end up coming for this girl. The sheriff nods. Looks the four of you. You're going to find her. I guess we're going to find her. The sooner than the better, but... It would be unfortunate if you were to tip your hand. Now, Theo looks from the uh, sheriff to the four of you. The Anarchs have become increasingly withdrawn since the um, departure of the Gangrel from the Camarilla. Uh, tensions uh, continue to remain high in the city, and they sparked even higher with the sudden explosion of your office building in your recognized domain. Haven't you heard? That was just a gas leak. Jermaine hit him. 
the, for the first time, you actually see uh, uh, the Archon, Theo Bell, swivel his head towards Byron, and there's a, uh, a menacing frown which appears on his face as he looks at the Ventru. Hey, hey, I was just saying, good, good job with the media work. There is no, no derision involved. We would like to keep it that not every kindred's stake is at risk here in this city, if not the entire world for egregious violations of the masquerade. He gestures towards Joseph, such as not blushing up. Sheriff nods. Well then, I suppose we have our mission and our duty. If there is uh, nothing else, I suppose we should get to it. This Dante, the sheriff begins, was he the only one who attacked you? You said, we. What of these others? Or they, rather. He, we know nothing about him. There were two others that attacked us directly at our uh, uh, office a week or so ago. Um, the only lead we have to go on for them is that they all have the same cars from probably the same car lot. And their phone numbers. Uh, I, well, I don't know if those would have names. They may have names attached. So there have, was uh, one phone, phone number uh, that was actually uh, kept with the cell phone. You don't know exactly what it was. It was just a uh, a Jersey, uh, New Jersey area code. Right. So we have that lead as well. No. Uh, see. Uh, the sheriff and Archon end up uh, looking between the four of you and uh, look back at themselves. Sheriff says, We will keep a lookout better for Sabbat incursions. But the ghouls we have at the bridges are not perfect. They, uh, Theo uh, speaks up. In that regard, it seems clear, at least to me, that the Sabbat were interested in this woman you sent to the Anarchs. I can think of no other explanation why they would head all the way to Queens to target your domain. Unless you can think of a better explanation? Yeah, Byron's just going to say under his breath, we should have let that girl kill herself when she asked. Sheriff pipes up. You know, and apparently being pretty good at hearing, she wanted to kill herself too. Looks at Joseph, and I thought you said you wanted to do her a kindness. I did. He snorts. Theo has a neutral expression. <laughs> Theo says, it appears that my business in the city will uh, keep me here for some time in light of these uh, developments. Whoever this woman is, it seems that uh, she is interesting to our enemies, and therefore must be interesting to us. then perhaps it was best that she not end up dead. And Sheriff shakes his head. Uh, Theo ends up saying nothing. Uh, but uh, Theo does end up looking at Kadir and says, uh, Kadir, I will take a personal hand in this and uh, check out Jersey, see what I can find out about this. Sheriff nods. Looking up at Theo, 
and uh, he looks back towards the four of you, says, It's not often that an Archon will follow up on your leads, neonates. Sounds good. As for you, please see to it that you do not cause any other egregious disturbances as you eke out your little unlives here in the Big Apple. There's a roar outside from the crowd as something's happening during the game as it enters, you know, into its second quarter. No one, uh, at least the two, uh, the two gentlemen who've been uh, interrogating you, don't turn their heads to look. Uh, well, unless there's something else you two need us to do, I think we have a job to go do. So, yeah. Sheriff sort of quirks his head, uh, looks back up at, uh, at Theo, and uh, looks towards uh, Marcus. Regarding this supernatural beam of light and heat that shot itself in the storage company, looks a little disbelieving, he does. Are you sure you saw what you saw? Well, I didn't technically see anything. The only one who saw anything was Jermaine. It flipped over on him. Yes, his nice new van. I see. That is the same location where a drunk driver, I believe, was found not too long ago. Theo. Yeah, the sheriff is musing out loud. This doesn't matter to Theo, so he's not exactly paying attention. <laughs> In that Marcus. case, keep a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Mark is just going to eyeball Joseph when he says that. In that case, do keep me abreast of further developments. While it is the responsibility of you all to protect your domain, Recent events have taken your ability to do so in question. Although, to be fair, not everyone is equipped to handle the Sabbat, though they should be. Uh, the Archon pipes up. Never forget, the Sabbat are the enemy, no matter what. Sending one to final death you did was a good thing, but there are still two others, at least, who are apparently after you, and perhaps by proxy, this woman. Or vice versa, that's totally out of character, by the way. You can say that if you want. <laughs> I don't want to say that in character. <laughs> you sure you don't want to? <laughs> Dude, I'm not part of this coterie. Come on, you're black, just like the the two of them. You'll 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 mesh in just fine, right? <laughs> no, I won't. I'm from Harlem. At least one of these guys sounds like he's from the old world. Oh man. At least one of these guys is from the old world. Well, uh, in, in fairness, uh, what you actually do know about uh the, the lineage is uh, Kadir is from India. And uh, Theo Bell was actually ending up from uh, from the southern part of the United States. Though their accents and uh, words may have changed over the course of their unlives, and partly because, well, I could do all sorts of crazy accents from this to this, I, I can't exactly uh, emulate normal people speaking. Normal people? Yeah, fuck that. I can do crazy monsters, which I guess vampires are, but beyond that, uh, Kadir ends up saying, Then I believe our business is concluded here, neonates. But again, do keep the advice in mind.
Theobel actually ends up nodding and says, Well, with that, Kadir, you'll have to enjoy the rest of the game without me. Kadir doesn't look too upset by Theo saying this. <laughs> uh, Theo ends up uh, brushing past uh, Marcus um, before uh, he ends up leaving the, uh, the box. Leaving just you alone with the sheriff of New York City. Well, Byron, for the third time, I'll say, well, it's uh, truly been a pleasure to meet you. Um, if there is nothing else, perhaps we should uh, uh, gesturing to the coterie. Not yes. Coterie. Watch what you say, Ventrue. You never know who might be listening. Yes, yes, my sire left out quite a few of the finer points of Camarilla society. I've been learning as I go. Apologies. And your sire? Who was she? Oh, an inconsequential uh, woman in Europe. He lifts a brow. Rare to address one's sire in such a... manner. Very disrespectful. And for that, I actually want you to give me a, uh, a, 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 a manipulation plus subterfuge, Byron. <laughs> Difficulty six, but it will be opposed by uh, the sheriff. All right, I also get the, uh, do I get the voice check on him as well? I mean, if not, I would understand he's, you know, Mr. Sheriff, dude. Your enchanting voice, apparently. <laughs> the sheriff gives zero fucks about that. <laughs> I don't know if this is six or seven, but if, it, if it's only six, I'll do one more. See, do you have anything that, uh, like a specialty that's involved in manipulation or subterfuge that would uh, increase your 10 to 2 successes? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, let me see, what did I pick? Uh, persuasive. Okay. The sheriff just nods along with what you end up saying, saying, I see. Well then, off you go. Right. Later. I will get up and, uh, to leave. Later. Marcus is later to the sheriff. <laughs> they would just flip the table and walk out. Like, yeah. Yeah, we did that. Fucking flip the table. Because <laughs> that's smart, right? Oh, yeah. You know, throw the sheriff's table around. And it's worth noting, and the, uh, the the vampires certainly would have felt this, although uh, Jermaine, spending time around vampires, would have noticed it too. Both of these vampires have an incredible amount of, well, in addition to intimidation, presence. Which uh, sort of uh, helps, you know, radiate that uh, disapproving elder feel. Yeah. Regardless, uh, you all end up leaving the box, and you're outside of it, and you're free to go about as you please. Are, are we anywhere to private where I can put Jermaine, uh, not Jermaine, <laughs> well, where I can put Br Brian's head on a, a stick and wave it around? Well, you currently are outside of the box, and uh, there's a, a, a guard uh, standing by the, uh, the white metal door. How much you would care, you can't say. But this is Elysium. Okay, I'll wait until we're out the front door. All right, you all managed to exit well enough this uh, place here. Uh, Marcus, I want you to make a self-control roll for me at difficulty six. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Nope. <laughs> that mural. Marcus, it's still there. 
Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous! Guys, can we stay here for a while? Yeah, sure. It looks like uh, Joseph wants to have words with me anyway, so take a gander for a while. J Jermaine, you should, Jermaine, look at this thing. Just look at this. Is this amazing? It's some goddamn graffiti. But, I mean, really look at it. I am. Byron, just are we anywhere uh, relatively quiet? Uh, if we can, if we're not, that's where I. You guys like would likely have to head back to the car in order to get some quiet, because again, there are so many people. You know, like legions of humans, lick sticks, the kind swarming inside and around the Madison Square Garden. Okay, then, Jermaine, should we leave him here for the night? Or should we, you know, wrap him up and stick him in the trunk? It's up to you guys. You're not sure exactly what it is about the vibrant colors and gentle contours of this mural that catches your eye, Marcus. But, uh, you know, does it seem like there's uh, anyone to immediately talk to, so you end up just describing, uh, it's, uh, it's glory to yourself. Well, I'd be the only one who would understand it anyways. Fucking plebeians. Plebeians. Sure. Well, I mean, if we are going to do something about Leslie Cutter tonight, which may or may not be a good idea, um, up to you guys, then we could potentially leave him here for a while and come back and get him later. <laughs> I think he'll, uh, out of care, I think he'll be too useful, so, uh, um, sorry, walking up behind him, put my hand over his eyes. Marcus, suddenly someone has come up behind you and surprised you, um, you know, with, you know, and suddenly covered your eyes while you're hungry. First, I want you to make a self-control roll of difficulty six to have the effect of the mural breaking. I think it's broken. But that succeeded. Now I want you to make a, um, a self-control roll of difficulty six to uh, not immediately get hostile in this situation. I think I'm not hostile. You're not immediately oh, hostile, but someone has decided to creep up behind you while you're distracted and cover your eyes. Who the fuck is behind me? You better have a fucking good reason, otherwise... I don't know I what I do. I you. And now that you're facing me, rather than being stupid and staring at a picture, can we go? I don't think you understand the severity of the situation. That was a very nice mural, and I was only halfway through describing it. I'll just, without words, turn and start walking back towards the car. Oh, he's walking away from me? I'm going to follow him. I can't hey, hang. I can't. Hey, guy. Guy. Hey, guy. Don't you turn your back on me. <laughs> You're walking here. You're pale man. Anyway, anyway, he's probably going to get in the car and completely talk to, just talk at Joseph about the painting. 